We now turn our attention to the issue of potential energy. And potential energy is a very, very important concept in physics. And particularly, we're going to focus on potential energies that come out of what we call conservative forces. All right, now, you're already familiar with one conservative force, the force of gravity, mg. All right, now, a conservative force is a force that um, the path of an object, all right, if an object is move, it starts at an initial place, is moved to a new location, and then returns to its original spot, okay, then the total amount of work done is independent of how the object moved, all right? Now, as an example, that's a very esoteric uh, uh, explanation, all right? Uh, mathematically, we're, we're gonna look at uh, closed integrals and, and that can be a little uh, confusing. So to initially start our discussion on work and potential energy, let's consider this example right here, all right? So what we have here, imagine this is the staircase uh, maybe in a uh, stairwell, you know, where the one set of stairs goes up one way and then it curves around and then it goes back up the other way, all right? And so you can look right over where the bottom of the staircase is at the top. So imagine that I have a person up here at the top of my staircase and he's holding a brick, all right? So this person is holding a brick and there's a nail uh, in a piece of wood at the bottom of the staircase. Uh, this person doesn't have a hammer with them, so they realize that one way to drive the nail into the wood is to drop a brick on it, all right? Now, the path that the brick takes, uh, if the person took the brick from the bottom of the staircase, up the staircase, and around, and up here, okay, they have done work on the brick. Now, in fact, they've actually done an amount of work, MGH, all right? And H is the height, I'll denote it here, it's the height that the brick is above the nail. Now, theoretically, we're gonna say that the nail is a very small nail, it's essentially uh, at ground level, okay? So H is essentially the height that the brick is above the ground, okay? So the person in moving the brick up this staircase has done work MGH, but they had to take a very long and convoluted path to rise to this height, okay? Now imagine a very similar scenario where instead of bringing the brick up the staircase itself, okay, imagine that I have a uh, crane and I can just lift the brick right over the nail and I just lift the brick straight up so that the brick is now also at the same height h as in the case of the staircase, all right? Which brick has had more work done to it, okay? As a matter of fact, the works are equal, all right? And this is because the gravitational force is conservative. What we mean by this is it doesn't matter what the path that the object takes if I let my brick start down here and I take it up the staircase and then I drop the brick right back down to where it started, that means that it has had a closed path. Its ending point is right where its starting point is. Same thing with this scenario. If my brick starts right here and I lift it up with a crane um, and then I drop it, it's going to end up right where it started. So both of these paths are closed, okay? The brick is going to end up right where it started. And my question is this, okay? Which scenario is going to drive the nail in further? If I snap the cable holding this brick or just drop the brick from this height, uh, from the staircase, if these two heights are indeed the same, which nail is going to get driven in further? Your intuition would say, well, they're both the same height above the ground, so they're both going to hit the uh, nail with the same amount of force. And in fact, that's a little bit of a fuzzy uh, concept in this case, but they're both going to impact with the same amount of something, okay? And that something is the amount of work done that you have put into it to raise it to this height. So if the brick falling here is going to fall with the exact same amount of work uh, done to it as this brick has been done to it, then what we can see is that gravity, the force of gravity is conservative because it doesn't matter the path that it takes for an object to move from its initial point 
to come back to its starting point. In this case, the path of the brick is just straight up and then straight back down, right? And in this case, the path of the brick is up the staircase and then back down. But in each case, even though these paths look very different, they both end up and start at the same place. And they both are going to drive the nail in the same depth. So they're both going to uh, release an amount of work, MGH, okay? So in this case, we say that the work done by the brick on the nail is equivalent in both cases. When the work done is equivalent, independent of the path that the object has taken, we call the forces that are involved in creating those works uh, conservative forces, okay? Now, since we have a basic idea of now what a conservative force is, now we're at a point to introduce the concept of potential energy. So we'll stick with the uh, crane idea for now, all right? And my question is this. So I lift the brick up with the crane, all right? And I do a work, MGH, to lift it to this height. The work done to lift the brick to this height is MGH. But as long as the brick is suspended from the cable, it's not going to do anything. It's not doing anything. But the instant that I let the cable go or snap the cable or whatever my mechanism is, the brick starts to fall, it has the potential to do work on the nail. You know that because the brick's gonna smash into the nail and it's gonna help drive it into the piece of wood, right? So it has the potential up here to do work. And that's what we mean by potential energy. Potential energy is the energy that a system has stored in it or the potential to do work or perform some operation, mechanical operation. So potential energy at the end of the day is stored energy uh, or the potential to do work, okay? And there are two essential uh, forms of potential energy that we're going to explore, and those are gravitational and elastic. So I will write those down. Gravitational and elastic. And you're already familiar with the formula for gravitational potential energy. I already wrote it up there. Potential energy has the same units as work and kinetic energy, so it's also joules. And uh, gravitational potential energy is the stored energy that you have as you lift something against the force of gravity. So as you lift something against the force of gravity, some height above a surface, then the work done is just MGH, and therefore it has potential energy, MGH. So the potential energy of gravity is equal to the force of gravity times the height that you lift it, h. And if you see, this is indeed just the amount of work you put in to raise it, because work is force, mg, times the distance, the height that you lift it above the surface. So mgh is just a simplistic form for the gravitational potential energy of an object. All right. So this is a very handy formula. Uh, elastic potential energy. And this is the potential energy that's wrapped up in things like springs and rubber bands, okay? And uh, we talked before about the uh, spring constants of a spring, and um, the potential energy of a spring, we'll call it PE e for elastic, is equal to one half times the spring constant times the distance that a spring or rubber band is stretched from its equilibrium point or length squared. Okay, so that's what this x means. It's the length that the spring has been stretched beyond its original equilibrium length, all right, um, squared. And so these are the two main sources of potential energy that we are going to run into. So in the next video, we'll do several examples uh, using these concepts of potential energy. All right, we'll see you then.